Hey, aloha everyone. Michelle Melendez with BlossomInnerWellness.com and StandTogetherHawaii.com. Please visit those websites. And also this is on the voice of Kona Radio, 100.5 FM. Mahalo so much if you're listening on the radio and for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you feel that this channel, if this episode warrants that. This episode is going to be on the Department of Defense and how it uses universities uh, as affiliated research centers, especially the University of Hawaii. This is uh, going to share with you a lot of information that somebody just gave to me, and uh, it kind of blew my mind. So before we get started, as always, I want to say thank you so much. Much mahalo to my sponsor, aceofcoins.com. Again, if you need uh, help with your taxes, want to lower your taxes, want to eliminate, eliminate your taxes lawfully, want to license your biometric data, which is your face, your image that's being used by big tech, Ace of Coins is the way to go. If you want to buy cryptocurrency and have it be tax-free, go to aceofcoins.com, A-C-E-O-F-C-O-I-N-S.com, much mahalo. And the last thing I'm going to share is I am going to be running a detox program. If you've been watching the skies, if you've been seeing the engineering that they're doing, if you've been, uh, if you understand that we are being basically bombarded with toxins in our food, in our air, in our water, and if you're having gut issues, please stand by and I will give you guys a link starting next week to a detox that not only cleanses your gut, heals your intestinal walls, uh, but it also helps you sleep better, gives you more energy because you're detoxing, you're cleansing out your system from toxins. So, and uh, that will help to boost your immune system. And we all know that that is important right now. So let me get started. Okay. The, this is a forward. I've gotten a lot of information. I'm just going to be reading most of it and then doing some commentary. And if you have any questions or comments, please uh, comment below. Uh, okay, the Department of the Department of Defense has long recognized that American universities are the leading edge of research, development, and engineering, and can be a strategic asset in order to provide a lethal effect effective joint force. Now I'm sharing this information because it's important for us to know what is going on. Okay, we have a voice when we know what's happening. When we ignore things and we act like things aren't happening and we don't know or we don't wanna know, oh, I don't wanna know about that. Oh, I don't wanna know about that. That's when you're, you're just fully accepting and embracing your enslavement. And it's time for each one of us to at least see what's happening and learn what's going on, especially if you're on the islands here. And if you're not on the islands, this is going to affect you because this is not just at Hawaii University, a public establishment, a public school. Well, let me uh, finish this. Officially established by the Under Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering in 1996, the Department of Defense University Affiliated Research Centers served to formalize the strategic relationship of research of research centers affiliated with universities, some of which started during World War II. So they've been actually using the different universities uh, for the Defense Department. And But what's happening right now is they currently have about 77 million in their budget for this program and it's going up to 350 million so i'm going to be sharing that in a moment this is from the university of hawaii president david lassen phd he says success cannot be taken for granted the responsibility of all leaders is to treat the urcs as a strategic asset which is the University Affiliate Research Centers, that's what U, U, UARC stands for, as a strategic asset for operational effective, I'm sorry, for operational effect, the war fighter is counting on us to ensure that the US military remains the most potent and effective fighting force in the world. The war fighter, that is what they're calling, that's what they're calling our soldiers. That's what they're calling our men and women who work for the military is the war fighter. They're, they're putting them into one category as a war fighter. Next part of this is established in 2008, the Applied Research Laboratory at the University of Hawaii is the fifth of five Navy sponsored university affiliated research centers. And then you're gonna love this. Remember when I always talked about the stakeholders, remember the Maui city stakeholders that they had created in, uh, from 2011 to 2016, the 
Hawaii and Japanese stakeholders created the smart city uh, agenda. And then in Bill uh, 3381, I believe it was, they said that they're going to comply with their stakeholders to rebuild Lahaina, but that, that gives them actually the entire control over the entire dis, uh, west coast of Maui. So they're going to comply with their stakeholders, and then it says Maui County, and then uh, building uh, experts. And they said um, and, uh, the entire west coast of Maui for these stakeholders. But let's, let's, let, let, the reason why I'm saying that is because of this next sentence. Hawaii was chosen as the location of the first Navy University Affiliated Research Center to be established since the 1940s because of its strategic location, proximity to relevant Department of Defense stakeholders. Who around us, around the Hawaii Islands, is the Department of Defense? Like, who around us? Is it, I don't know, is, is Japan part of that? Is, like, I know the U.S. is over here, but they said in proximity to relevant Department of Defense stakeholders. So somewhere around Hawaii, there's some stakeholders that are in with the Department of Defense. Okay, let's go to the second part of this. Navy University Affiliated Research Laboratories. Okay, let's talk about the five that are here. John Hopkins is a university. It's the biggest university affiliated research center. Pennsylvania, Texas, Washington, and then Hawaii. Smallest of the Navy University Affiliated Research Centers. It started in, again, 2008. Total contract funding through two contracts. The Navy, which is 77 million, and the Air Force, which is 75 million. Currently negotiating for a five-year contract renewal of the contract with the Navy that will be a total of 300 million, an increase of 554%. And this contract is to start on June 1st, 2024. And it says uh, the Navy is NAVSEA, so it's some type of, um, of uh, department with the Navy. The ARL, which is affiliated, uh, I'm sorry, um, this is the Applied Research Lab. University of Hawaii's Applied Research Lab has two contracts under the program. Uh, the ARL, Applied Research Lab, is located on Oahu at the Mo Monoa Invent Innovation Center. This program runs under the Navy, contracted, again, $77 million. How's the lighting? Okay. Sometimes the light goes weird here. Okay. And then, oh, you guys are going to love this part. You guys are going to love this part. Added to the you know, Applied Research Lab in March 2019 was the Maui High Performance Computer Center. And I'll just do a quick screen share with that because I'll show you where that's at. Move this over here. I believe it's right here. This is the Maui High Performance Computer Computing Center, established in 1930, uh, 1993, is an Air Force Research Laboratory center managed by the University of Hawaii under contract to the, US, to the Air Force Research Laboratories, directed energy dictator at Kirkland Air Force Base in New Mexico. So this is where it is at. And this is also known, get this you guys, as the Vanguard Center. This is also known as the Vanguard Center. This program, program is run through the Navy, but, by, but is sponsored by the Air Force. The contract is currently at 75 million, 75 million. That's where it's at. And let me go to the next part of this. And this person, I did get this information from somebody who uh, is a uh, is a whistleblower around this information because this is pretty dang huge. High Performance Computing Center. This is Maui, and it is uh, one of five high performing high performance computer computing centers receives funding from both the Navy and Air Force contracts, 64% of total de defense of Department of Defense funding. 64% of the Department of Defense funding goes to this. Let me say that again. 64%, that's what it says, the total Department of Defense funding goes toward this. And only the HPCC that is connected with the university, which is High Performance Computing Center that is connected with a university. So we're the only one High Performance Computing Center, I'm gonna tell you what that's gonna do, uh, in the university, um, the currently. The next part of this, the member David Lassen, the principal, principal investigator and the uh, president of 
the University of Hawaii. And remember that the Maui High Performance Computing Center is also the Vanguard Center. This He says, the Maui High Performance Computing Center is the largest extramural project in uh, University of Hawaii history, said the UH President David Lassener and Principal Investigator. It is the cornerstone of high tech on Maui and provides some of the best jobs on the island. Who are they providing these jobs to? Are these jobs provided to the locals? Are they provided uh, to the people that have been living on Maui for a really long time? Or are people coming in and taking these jobs? I, it doesn't say that. It just says, oh, these are some of the best jobs on the island, as if, yeah, we're giving them to these people, but let's, let's keep reading. Total funding of the Maui High Performance Computing Center currently is $94,622,617, or 65% of the Applied Research Laboratory funding. 65% of the Applied Research Laboratory funding at the University of Hawaii goes to the Maui High Performance Computing Center. Isn't that interesting? Thought that was very interesting. Number six, okay, and this is questions regarding this. These are not my questions. This is from somebody who, who, who sent this to me. The only high-powered computing center that is connected to a higher education system uh, is at the University of Hawaii. And let's see here, the website does not mention, okay, that that's, let me change that. Okay, they say that it does not hire or offer computing training to the University of Hawaii's uh, students. So this is just for the Department of Defense is what, they're, is what they're saying here. The contract comes up in 2025, around the same time that David Lassner retires from his position as the president of the University of Hawaii. And why is its why it why is its funding coming through the University of Hawaii when it's mostly going toward the Defense Department? Isn't that interesting? I don't know. It's it mo if most of the funding is high security, why is it being funded through a public higher education institution? That's a really good question, I think. And let's go on to the next one. Sorry, you guys. Let's do the next page. Oh, these are these are the these are this is um just graphs that I see, but the future for the University of Hawaii, for the Maui High Performance Computing Center Air Force contract the, from 2025 to 2030 is estimated to be 325 million dollars, going from about 77 million to 325 million dollars. They also talk about how um, the work the working environment is is not um, is biased uh, toward those who are working in this program versus the students that are at the university, and that is that is pretty disturbing. This whole thing is disturbing. But anyway, let's keep going. This is what the summary says from the person who sent this to me: allowing the Department of Defense to fund research results uh, to fund research results in deliverables from weaponry and is in support of current and future military actions. The majority of their actions do not benefit the public, rather only the military's mission of lethality. And they give a de definition for le lethality, which I think we can all guess what that is, but I'll, I'll share that in a moment. Uh, this directly contradiction, uh, contradiction, yeah, contradiction with the mission of the University of Hawaii. So let's look up what the mission of the University of Hawaii. So here's the mission for the University of Hawaii. The primary mission of the University of Hawaii is to provide environments in which faculty and students can discover, examine, critically preserve and transmit the knowledge, wisdom and values that will help ensure the survival of the present, future and future generations with improvement in the quality of life. Well, does having a humongous De Department of Defense program at the university, does that equal the f uh, supporting life for the future generations? I don't know. I th what, what, what do you guys think? What do you guys think about that? Here's what he says. The new contracts with the Navy and Air Force will generate hundreds of millions of dollars. Is that more important than the actual mission that the University of Hawaii has to say? Interesting. And the oversight of these funds are at the sole discretion of the director of 
the University of Hawaii uh, and their um, uh, ARLs, which stands for Applied Research Laboratory. So whoever is the director of the University of Hawaii and their Applied Research Laboratories is the sole discretion of these millions of dollars. Isn't that interesting? So the last thing I want to share is the University Affiliated Research Center strategy for 2020. Who else knows about 2020? Agenda 2020, President David Lassner. And I'm smiling because this part, it kind of cracks me up. Uh, but uh, it says the Department of Defense's long-term strategic relationship with the university affiliated research uh, companies requires the, um, you guys, sorry about that, needed to have some water here. Okay, Department of Defense's long-term strat strategic relationship with the university affiliated research centers requires the applied research laboratory at University of Hawaii to provide and maintain advanced and sophisticated engineering, research, and or development capabilities essential to the department's mission and operations. Now this part is the funny part, funny part. University affiliated research centers operate as independent, trusted advisors and honest brokers agreeing to limit their operations, agreeing to limit their operations in order to be free from real or perceived conflicts of interest. Isn't it interesting how they had to put trust and honest in the same sentence? And it's just like these independent operators who are trusted and they're honest and they're going to agree to limit their operations in order to be free from real or perceived conflict. So basically they're 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 not they're going to limit working for other people so that they won't be in conflict, have a conflict of interest because, but we trust these people because they say it's, tr they, they're trusted advisors and they're honest. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta believe in that. This freedom enhances the department's ability to fight and win wars in an era of great power competition. And it will enable operators, these independent operators who are trustworthy and honest, and military decision makers to harness leading edge capabilities to capitalize on strategic and tactical opportunities that are currently unavailable. Yeah, let's capitalize on going to war because that's what freedom's all about. We have a responsibility to gain full value from the Department of Defense capabilities and investments, thereby earning the trust. Okay, that's the second time trust is put, put in this paragraph of the operational war fighter. The trust of the operational war fighter, that's our men and women who are serving right now. Thereby earning the trust of the operational war fighter, all one, one being, what, what is that? Um, that was just like uh, the Nazis when they were the Homeland Security and one, one motherland and one war fighter, the US Congress and the American people. Embrace, okay, embracing the university affiliated research center strategic relationship and leveraging the freedom to innovate will improve military operations and, inc and increase lethality, lethality. So they leave the definition. Remember I said, here's the definition. The quality of state of causing death or destruction, deadly, fatal, or mortal. Who wants that definition in the University of Hawaii or any university? Lethality, to increase lethality. Let me just read the sentence one more time. Okay, I'll read it one more time. Embracing the University Affiliated Research Center strategic relationship and leveraging the freedom to innovate will improve military operations and increase lethality, which is the quality of state of causing death and, or destruction, deadly, fatal, and mortal. Wow, that's interesting. Let's read this last part and then let's do a quick massive prayer for this. To enable, for this not to continue, but we're gonna, I gotta close the window here, okay. To enable this continued relationship, the Applied Research Laboratory at the University of Hawaii 
is adopting a strategy to expand its center of excellence to address the war fighters' needs. That's one one being this war fighters' needs in this new era of great power competition. However, the success of these efforts depends upon fostering collaboration with our stakeholders community and our planet. I love how they put stakeholders first because what is uh, more important than the planet, everybody? They're stakeholders, you know, the people who are giving you money for death and destruction and uh, uh, fatal and mortal uh, death around the world. Yeah, because war is number one with this war fighter, right? So that's what's going down, everybody, at the University of Hawaii. And we, we do have we can do some actions. I was asking my friend who gave this to me, I was like, what can we do? And she says in April, there's a committee of the University of Manoa and they're going to be, um, uh, they're going to be doing a, a meeting. So uh, we'll have a community to be able to, I think, to make some testimonies or something like that. Now we know that they aren't gonna listen to us because they they are doing what they are doing. It's on, a, it's an agenda, agenda 2030, just like it said. UARC strategy agenda 2030, President David Larsner. Yeah, really appreciate that guy because he's a trusted advisor and honest person. Yeah. So anyway, I'd love to hear your guys' opinions. Uh, if this spoke to you, please like, subscribe, and share and help uh, get this word out. We, we need to know what's going on. You need to see the demons before we can uh, obliterate them with our light, okay? We got to see what's happening. And yeah, it feels like a lot. It feels like it keeps going. Take a deep breath. Drop into nature. Know that you are loved beyond measure. And just as the sun comes up and moves across the sky, it's giving you light because it's letting, allowing you to feel that warmth of love. The sun is constantly sending us warmth and it never asks for anything in return. I think that was Rumi. The poet Rumi was talking about that. And he said, you know, the, the sun never asks for anything in return after millions and millions of years of sending light and warmth to the planet. What a love, what kind of love is that? That's how much you're loved. That's how much you're loved. Let's do a quick prayer. Great spirit, infinite intelligence of all things. This is quite the time right now. And we as little peon humans, sentient beings really in these vessels that we only have for a short time are in quite the game. But great spirit, we just know that you are the one running the show. This is your, this is your game and we have chosen to come and we are trusting in you, great spirit, with moving through the inspiration that you guide us to do, speak, say, take action in whatever way we can, even if it's simply sharing a video or smiling to somebody. We just know that this world can be a better place, great spirit. We know it can. We see the freedom and the peace that all people want for themselves and the safety that all people want for themselves and their children, for each other. And Great Spirit, we just are so grateful that you are showing us the way. We are so grateful that we get to watch as things unfold, as these evil people who don't care about life, they care about war, as they are peaceably removed from office or they voluntarily step down. We get to watch as that happens, Great Spirit. And through you, we are stronger and stronger every single day, trusting in the earth, trusting in the aina, trusting in the ground underneath us, trusting in the hearts that are beating without us being plugged into a wall and our bodies that are breathing themselves. And that's through you, Great Spirit. Just as you run the tides in the ocean and move the stars across the sky, you beat our hearts and breathe our bodies. And we trust in this game. We trust in our choice to be here and we trust in our kuleana what is ours to do and we know we are always guided and always protected and we send this frequency and this vibrational frequency of peace and of hope to anybody around the world who needs it who feels alone we send it to anybody who's feeling hungry that their belly may be full we send it to anybody who is feeling alone and feeling despair we send them just a spark of hope that things can get better and Great Spirit, we know that they can because we trust in you and we let it all go. We let it all go. We trust in you. And so it is. So sending you guys so much aloha from the Big Island of Hawaii. And I know a lot of you guys really loved um, Desert Owl. I'm bringing him back. Uh, we're going to do a weekly show. And um, I am going to interrupt him because somebody was just like, 
<laughs> you're interrupting him. He's great at contact. You're interrupting him. I have a mission and I have a vision for, for what I want to share. And sometimes he has so much information, you guys, 52 years of information of ancient history. He can speak and speak and speak. And But if, if there's a, a certain message I want to share with you guys, because we could talk for like two or three hours with him. That's why I interrupt him. So just trust the journey. Trust the journey. Okay. I love you guys. Aloha.